This is video footage for the lab known as Archimedes Principle. So the setup that we have here, we'll be using um, the similar setup of the five samples uh, that we worked with in the past for density and for the calorimetry experiment. Uh, but this time what we're gonna do is uh, by using Archimedes Principle, we will determine the density of these substances uh, using the method of submerging uh, these things in, in the cylinder of water. So um, let's go ahead and get started here. So I have here a container of water that I'm going to pour into the graduated cylinder uh, behind it so that we can have uh, a column of water in there to uh, basically submerge the samples into. So let me go ahead and get that started. probably more than enough here, but this is what we got. Now, um, the method that is used uh, for Archimedes Principle, uh, we're trying to determine uh, the buoyancy, right, for the, uh, the system here of what uh, we submerge into the uh, water. And so the samples here are going to be submerged into the water. There's going to be something called the buoyancy force uh, that is acting on the objects upwards to basically provide a small amount of lift uh, to the, uh, the sample such that they don't feel as heavy as they would, let's say, outside of the water. So, for example, when you're inside a swimming pool and um, you, know, you, you jump in the swimming pool, you feel lighter, okay, and this process of feeling lighter is due to the fact that there is something called the buoyant force on your body pushing upwards on your body. So we're going to measure this. The first thing we've got to do is uh, get a measurement of the mass of each sample. And so I'm going to go through here and systematically do that right now. This has been zeroed, so let's make sure that is zeroed there. And then uh, here is aluminum with the hook. We're going to keep the hooks on there this time. So you can read the mass of the, uh, the sample there. This one is zinc. Copper, lead, and tin. Again, the tin does not have a hook. We'll have to uh, provide a means to loop uh, the string around it when we submerge it. Hopefully, we'll have some luck with that. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the, the first part here. So we measured the masses, so that was part one, but you're going to have to do the, cal uh, the calculation to figure out what they are in kilograms so you can get their uh, weight in newtons. Uh, the next thing what we have to do, so we've gone through step one and step two here. Now, since we don't have the, um, the scale uh, that we, in, in figure one uh, to the left here, the first method, we don't have the scale to work with, we're going to forego the first method. All right, we're going to go directly to the second method on how to, how to measure these things. So that means we're skipping step three, step four, and we move on to step five here. All right, so it says step five, measure the mass in kilograms of the graduated cylinder filled halfway with water. Well, we filled a little bit more than halfway, but that's okay. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. So this will be placed onto here, like so. So this is the mass of the graduated cylinder with the water uh, inside the cylinder. It's given as this value here. And again, you're going to take this value, uh, convert it to kilograms, and then multiply it by uh, the acceleration due to gravity to figure out what the weight of this is going to be. Now step six, it says using the string, submerge a sample into the middle of the graduated cylinder so that it's completely submerged but not touching the bottom of the cylinder. All right, so I'm going to use the string that I have here with the loop and I'm going to use the first sample here, which is aluminum. All right, so let me go ahead and submerge this in here and make sure that the sample is not touching the sides. So it's completely submerged, and it's not touching the sides, and we are getting a reading here for the overall mass of the system there. All right, so write down that number as part of your step six. 
Now, as I pull this out, obviously the mass is going to be slightly different because there's moisture on the outside of the sample. So you'll have to subtract that off. Sample for zinc. So there's the mass of the cylinder with water. And so I'm going to put this and submerge it inside the, the water now. So you'll note that the mass will change after I put this in here. This is zinc again. There's your number. We pull this out. Now the mass of the water may have changed. So make note of the water and cylinder value for the, the mass there. I'll grab the, the copper sample now. And I'll go ahead and put this in here, submerge it. And there's your value there. Pull it out, shake off some of the water. Make note of the new value. I'm doing lead now, lead sample. And I'm going to submerge this. Now obviously you may notice that there are some errors that are gonna be arising because the fact that string is not completely volumeless. There's a bit of volume there associated with the string itself. All right, so there's the mass of the system with the mass inside the water, All right? So let me go ahead and pull this out. And the last sample here we're gonna test out is tin. So, so far, aluminum, zinc, copper, lead, and finally tin. Now, with a little luck, I hope that this will submerge properly inside the water here without any issues. Well, hopefully this will stay like this. So there's your uh, value of the cylinder and water for this, uh, this one. Now I'm gonna submerge the tin this way. And there's your value there. It may be kind of bouncing around because the tin is bouncing around inside the cylinder there. So you have to sort of get an idea of what sort of an average that is. All right, that should be enough. I'll pull this out. All right. So given the masses that we just, uh, you know, determined here using the scale uh, before and after I submerged these things, uh, you should, according to step seven there, subtract five from six, and this will give you the buoyant force, all right? And so uh, getting the weight of the cylinder and the water by itself, that's this first step here, and then putting the sample in there and getting a new mass there, you have to convert that to weight also, right? You subtract the two weights together uh, from one another, and then that will give you this thing called the buoyant force. And we're not quite done yet. Uh, that is step seven there. Um, the density of the metal can be found using the formula. So rho, that, that Greek letter rho, looks kind of like a P. Rho of the sample, the density of the sample is equal to the density of the water multiplied by the weight of the sample divided by the buoyant force, all right? The weight of the sample, we got that in step, uh, step two, all right? Those are just the weight of those things in air and then a buoyant force is the result of taking uh, step six and then subtracting uh, you know, step five from that, all right? And so that should give you the buoyant force to calculate uh, you know, the, the density of each of the samples that we have here, all right? Um, and so that's basically it. Archimedes' principle is basically talking about uh, how much of the, uh, when we put the sample in there, it turns out that the buoyant force is equal to the amount of water that is displaced by the sample, all right, in terms of the weight of the water that's displaced by the sample. And so that force of the weight downwards uh, of the water that's been displaced by the sample is going to be equal to the buoyant force going upwards, all right, in the sample itself. So um, that's Archimedes' principle. We use uh, the first page here of the handout uh, to go through the derivations to use that towards figuring out the unknowns uh, associated with the system, in other words, the density of these things. Now again, uh, as before, you'll have to look up the density of these materials. 
Uh, in this case here, we're using uh, kilograms per cubic meter for the density, so you have to go online and find these things as values uh, associated with kilograms per cubic meter, and then give me a percent error associated with each, each one of these samples. Uh, the other thing to note, um, there's going to be some errors associated with the system. The, the beads of water on the outside of the sample took away some of the water. All right. Of course, the thread or the, the string that we're hanging it on is also displacing some of the water in the system. It's a small amount, but it could be significant depending on how, how thick the string is. All right. The hooks themselves for the first four samples, they have uh, significant hooks to them, whereas the tin does not. All right. uh, and so um, there may be some errors associated with that. Uh, you know, sort of taking into account the hooks not being part of the sample may uh, play into, you know, the, the, the variation of volume that you have in the system. So um, that's it.